What is up, Humanoid Nation? It's your favorite Mexican back at it again. Today, we're going to be reacting to A&E Court Cam. They have some good shit. Court Cam, attacking a lawyer. Top seven moments. Let's get to this. Let's do this. Now to the Moore Justice Center in Brevard County, Florida. Two charges of assault oh, uh, and resisting. Oh, yeah. okay, I seen this one. This one. Judge goes up. The judge gets into a fight with a lawyer. It's amazing. Have the public, Mr. Where public defender Andrew Weinstock and his client are appearing before Judge John Murphy, whose voice you hear. Defender, public defender, what do you want to do? Have they filed? They have. I'm not waiting. <sighs> All right. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? Oh, them waiting. fighting words. <laughs> You want to set up for trial, set up for trial. Judge Murphy wants the defendant to waive his right to a speedy trial because the court's schedule's backed up. Not Weinstock yeah, isn't budging okay. and tensions are mounting. If, if I had a rock, state. I would throw it at you right now. You know, Stop so, pissing me off. Just sit down. Yeah, that's not a partial uh, I don't need judge. No, you know what? I'm the public defender. I have a right to be here and I have a right to stand I said and represent sit down. My if you want to fight, let's go out back and I'll just beat your ass. Each they both I love it. He just goes to the, behind the courtroom. Yeah. Just they just straight go at it. Cameras. Believe it or not, they get into Can you imagine having a judge he instantly wants to fight you? Yeah, that's not going to go well for the judge. You're a judge. A physical altercation. Until Judge Murphy returns to the courtroom alone. Thank you. I will catch my breath eventually. Man, I'm an old man. You're from the Once old Judge Murphy style. catches his breath, he can. He's old school. He's old. Continues with the rest of the hearings without Weinstock present. Your choices, considering there's probably going to be a changeover. Oh, is Weinstock just out in the back bleeding? Just, could be just bleeding in the back there. And Okay, I feel sorry for the defendant. His judge is fucked up. I mean, his lawyer is fucked up. Personnel are setting it for trial June 9th. Or if you were wanting to waive speedy, we would set it for July 15th. I would like to get it done as fast as possible. The uh, nervousness in his voice. He doesn't the want to get those investigated hands. investigated by the Florida Judicial Qualifications Commission, who charged Judge John Murphy with threatening to commit violence against an assistant public defender, right. engaging in a physical altercation right. with counsel, and resuming his docket while defendants were without counsel. Yeah, that's counsel. some shady shit. The case eventually reaches How do you the continue Supreme your trial Court, without the lawyer present? Orders the immediate suspension and permanent removal of Judge Murphy from his post. Andrew Weinstock later resigns from the public defender's office. Why would he resign? He got his ass. We Seattle, Washington, and the King County courtroom. This is State of Washington versus Christopher Teal, cause number 1810083. Can I just say? Washington versus Christopher Teal, cause number 18. Can I just say, this man's sideburns are amazing? Look at that. Beautiful. 8100-8391 Seattle designation. Christopher Teal is accused of first degree rape and unlawful imprisonment. Teal allegedly followed a woman into the bathroom of a car dealership, oh, locked fuck the door, this guy. and raped her. The fuck attack this was guy. only after company employees broke into the stall and wrestled Teal to the ground. The defendant's in court for a competency hearing to determine whether he's fit to stand trial. Standing next to him is Reed Berkland, his court-appointed attorney. The jail guard removes Teal's cuffs. Uh, I'm Emily Peterson on behalf of the state. Mr. Teal's present. He's in custody. He's represented by counsel, Mr. Berkland. Uh, Mr. He raises his arm toward Berkland, but extra security is at the ready. I get it. He wants to touch that marvelous hair. Without provocation. What the hell? Teal punches his own attorney. The guards immediately pounce on the six foot three defendant and take him to the ground. Why? Teal's attorney Why did you slap him? Hurt. Put your hand behind your back. 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 Put your hand behind
behind your back. It takes four men to subdue Teal, and even then, he refused. I love this dude in the background, just watching, not giving one single fuck. It's like, well, I've seen this all the time. Nothing to react to here. Just going by was my day. Uses to go quietly. Bring the chair. Bring the chair. A spit hood is placed over his head as officers return him to jail. Berkland chooses not to press charges, but he does remove himself from the case. Good. Like, you, you want to continue on as this guy's lawyer? Nearly two weeks later, Teal returns to the courtroom. New counsel has been appointed since the last hearing. This time strapped to a rolling chair. New counsel needs time. His biggest concern is how his hair looked in his mug shop. I got one question, one thing to say. I'd like to know where the f they got that photo of me with my short hair. Oh, uh, when you got booked? Facebook and I don't have a Facebook. All right. You got booked. That's when they took your picture. Legitimate question. Like, do they have access to Google? Bro, when they book you in jail, they take a picture of you. Did you not see the camera in front of you when you were... Did you not wonder why you were standing in a, in a place where there was a camera? What? The judge schedules another hearing in a week's time. And the trial has yet to begin. We're at the Story County Courthouse in Nevada, Iowa. Nevada! It's the end of the day, and a group of prosecutors are headed home for the night. But as the Hi. attorneys head down a hallway, someone is trailing them from behind. Close to the exit, the man calls out one of the prosecutors by name. The attorney answers, but it's a quick conversation. Oh, damn. Okay. Walking in the rear of the attorney group is County Prosecutor Tim Meals. Unknown to him, a former defendant he prosecuted, 31-year-old uh. Major Robinson, has been lying in wait with an apparent score to settle. It's always former defendants who never get what they want. They want to get revenge. Robinson cocks back and uh, it's, punches the un- If you do crime, go to jail. Like, hey, you did it. Why are you mad? I'll go attack the lawyer and get more time. Suspecting attorney in the face. As the confrontation spills across the hallway, another county prosecutor, Tyler Eason, jumps in to help his colleague. Amid the struggle, Robinson also strikes Eason in the face, smashing his glasses. Oh, uh, that's not cool. Eventually, court security arrives and Robinson's arrested. Both prosecutors walk away with minor injuries to the head and face. Following the attack, Major Robinson was charged with two counts of assault and two counts of willful injury. The charges actually led to complaints from other prosecutors who feel they should be protected under similar laws as police officers and firefighters. Laws that elevate Hold on, the severity of oh, crimes, yeah, they're not. They're such boys. as assault. Never mind. Major Robinson ultimately pled guilty to the charges. Only one year in jail for that. To a year in jail. Okay. Let's go inside the Jefferson County Court in Lexington, Kentucky, for the competency hearing of murder suspect Jerry Lawson. Lawson has had numerous prior outbursts in court. Prosecutors believe what you're about to see is all an act to avoid a trial. Probably is all an act, or he's really that crazy. Lawson's charged with murder, arson, tampering with physical evidence, Abuse, abuse of a, of a corpse? corpse? I don't want to know what that means. Police say he torched the home of Bernice Aniton. The 64-year-old woman was found dead, and following an autopsy, police announced her death was suspicious. Today at his pretrial hearing, Lawson waited mere seconds before exploding into a rage against his own attorney, Mike Lemke. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he wants to be tried as insane. That way he doesn't get a harsh sentence. Like, imagine him, like, wanting... It could work, like, him pleading insane. 
just doing all this stuff and then getting a lighter sentence and go to the nut house instead of real jail. Or it could be he really is crazy like that. Who knows? You all right, Mike? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't, there's, I don't know what they're going to do. Once things settle down, the prosecution explains they've seen this performance before. Of course, and just like previous times, they're not buying it. But the competency evaluations, there's been two of them, and Dr. Allen's um, diagnosis has been consistent from 2013 to now that he's malingering, and that all of this eating illness, physical discipline, mental lapse, or derating. Okay. A show. All right. The case has to go forward. Maybe you know the next time. It Real jail up, for you. It'll be true whether no nut house at all. Whether he gets to stay out here or not. Despite Lawson's theatrics, the trial eventually took oh, place. Oh shit! He's convicted on in all five charges years in prison. and is currently all serving right. up to eighty-five years. They threw the book at him in the Luther Luckett Correctional Facility in Kentucky. He's high risk, so I'm going to raise the bond to five thousand. We're at Bond Court in Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah, I, mean, I think a thousand is reasonable given that these are felony charges. Good luck, sir. Judge Smith has a full plate of bond hearings. Uh, I actually have a card and I'm trying to sell on Craigslist. Stop, stop, stop talking. I'm going to give you a public defender. Michael All Ray, right. cases 87 and 88. Next up is Michael Ray, who's facing four charges, including criminal trespassing and second degree assault. You can terrorize France too, you forgot to say that. Proceeding if the defendant is cooperative. The prosecutor suggests a bail amount for Ray based on the crime and the defendant's history. Now the county's requesting $25,000 full cash fine, all charges. <laughs> Damn, that's a lot of money. You think that's yeah. funny? I think that's hilarious. We weren't done. Ray might feel $25,000 is too high, but sarcasm won't get him a reduction, and the judge lets him know it. All right, so bond is fifty thousand dollars. Oh damn! No bail credit. Danger to community. Never piss off happened. the judge. Never piss off the Lucky judge. I didn't hold him in contempt. Ray just had his bond doubled, but as he re-enters the hallway, he has something else to say. Uh, oh, oh, oh in, come I'm on, on man! That's exam. the dumbest shit you can do. Adding charges. Okay. Ray's language isn't the only thing to upset the judge. According to court officials, the defendant also gave her the middle finger. 30 days to serve on contempt for flipping me off twice. Judge 30 calls him day back. 30 days for flipping you off? That, that's a whole, what, wait, what? You can, you, uh. That is a surprise to me. Like, if you flip off a judge, well, yeah, you're. You can't really flip off a judge. 30 days? God damn! But it looks like he's gone. If we bring him back in, he's just gonna get another 30 days for doing something else. So they move on to the next case. Case number 90, Scott Raymer. When, sure enough, he comes back for more. Oh, really? Sir, I'm holding you in contempt for what you did. What's the holding me in? And so. Yeah. All right, you, you can take him back. 100 days to serve. 100 days to serve? Okay. Yeah. God damn. Shut, shut up, man. That's right. The judge just gave him 100 days in jail. They shut up. Ray could just walk away without making matters Don't tell me he comes back. But. He goes a different route. Came back. Yeah, I, mean, I think we need to. Yeah. Oh my God! How dumb can you be? Oh God damn it, Michael Ray! Oh my God! Can we bring him back? He's got to be charged. Yes. Who the whole? What started out as four serious charges has grown into a grand total of ten, on the span of approximately three minutes. Three minutes. It took all that. Yeah. No, I figure that's just a lesson on what not to do, so... Yeah, you know, don't okay. be like Michael Ray. We're in the Miami-Dade Bond Court. Good afternoon. 
I'm Judge Mindy Glazer. I'll be presiding today over the bond hearings. Today, she'll see dozens of defendants. You were arrested for retail theft, and I'll appoint the public defender for you. But one in particular is sure to stand out. The defendant is Sherry Lynn, who's facing charges of felony battery and resisting arrest with violence. Lynn appears remotely and is represented by a public defender. And from the very first question, have you ever been treated for any mental health issues? What is the first? It's clear Lynn is in no mood to yeah, be in court. I'm sorry, no. Has it gone yourself? Okay, well, I'm a little busy right now. <laughs> take another Great look. comeback. Has it gone yourself? Judge Glazer initially finds the behavior amusing. But she's not about to let it continue. Ma'am, ma I'm just trying to help. Ma'am, he, he's trying to help you, and please don't use profanity or try and disrupt my courtroom because I don't want to be forced to hold you in contempt of court. Or he's trying to, Mr. Sanders, trying to help you. And I'm ordering that you stay away from Cynthia Cuba. Do not have any contact with her, and you must stay away from her home and place of business. As to the other case, who is this <laughs> Cynthia Cuba? Tell me. Oh, oh you should. You literally to. try to hit with the pliers. The other case. Man, you should have told her who the witness was. That's a dumb move. Do you have any teeth? It's five thousand dollars. And count three is one thousand dollars. Have a nice day, ma'am. Let's try and get you into the hospital. Lynn's ordered to pay a fifty dollar fine and undergo a psychiatric evaluation. Now to the Cuyahoga County Common Police Court in Cleveland, Ohio. This man, David Chiselton, has Chiselton. been convicted of aggravated okay. arson and felony assault. He's here today to receive his sentence. Investigators claim Chiselton beat his girlfriend with a pistol, then held her hostage before setting an apartment complex on fire. Oh, fuck him. Fortunately, no one else was injured in the fire. Chiselton is handcuffed in the front. This is unusual. Typically, convicts are handcuffed with their hands behind their yeah, backs why would you for security do it in purposes. The front? Somebody the messed up their job. The reason you can't hear the audio is because the body cam of the bailiff hasn't yet fully engaged. That's kind of sus. We can tell you that the judge is sentencing him to 47 years at this very moment. God damn! And he is not happy about that. Back your lawyer. Yeah, he did. I just add more the time man he on just that. attacked was his own attorney, Aaron Brockler. Hey. Yeah, you call? Yeah. No. Oh. Yeah, he messed up. Yeah, messed up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Listen, when I uncuff you, put your hand behind your back. Do you understand? Yeah. Okay. They're now cuffing him behind his back. Oh, now back. you do it behind. Well, that's it. Three deputies escort Chiselton out of the courtroom. Yeah. Okay. And down to the holding cell. SRT! He's a dumbass! He's charged with one count of felonious assault and now faces the possibility of an even longer sentence. Yup. Joining me now is the attorney that you see on that video, Aaron Brockler. Thank you so much for coming in. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. So take us to the, the moment before he attacks you. Were you talking to him? Was he just responding to the judge? I was talking to him, telling him um, that I was going to come and see him in the jail uh, because there may be some things that we could do to uh, help you know, mitigate the sentence a little bit. Then he turned and looked at his daughter in the courtroom, um, uttered a profanity to her, and then th that's when he struck me. Have you ever had anything like that happen to you before? No, because there's, there's generally there's safeguards in place, you know, specifically you, you Not today. Cuff from behind. Um, and, you know, nine out of ten times you get along well with the client. You're, you're there to help him. I think he just was overwhelmed the years he got. Was he expecting a, a lesser sentence? I don't think he was expecting it. I think he was hoping for it. And I t prepared him for the fact that expect them to argue for the max. We'll argue for the minimum. Judge will probably come out somewhere in the middle. She actually was below the middle. Um, but I think he just 
seeing his ex and seeing his child there and then hearing the amount of years probably just led to a breakdown for him. What sort of injuries did you endure? He broke my nose, oh. got me on the left side of my nose, so I may have to have Damn. some surgery there for, to improve the breathing. I believe that I lost consciousness um, when it happened. Well, like I, I think that he knocked me out, and then I fell into the table and then landed underneath the trial table. When I woke up, people were like, are you okay? It was like taking a slap shot in the face. <laughs> my head was just ringing, and I was like, whoa, because I didn't see it coming. It was a total sucker punch. Yeah. Aaron Brockler, thanks very much for coming in. We appreciate it, and good luck with the ongoing recovery. Thank you. Thanks for being a fan of Court Cam. Sub yeah, I, I, I can, I guess that's sort of, I can understand where he's coming from. Like, he was expecting less, and then he got more. Thought a, saw his daughter and his ex there, so he kind of snapped. But still, it's still a dumb thing to do. Really a dumb thing to do. Just don't piss off judges and start fights, because that's going to give you more time. Especially that Michael Ray dude. Oh, my. Anyway, that's it for now. Human on AC and Humanoid Freakout. Bye. Pasito a pasito, suave, suavecito. Nos vamos.